Hey everyone, and welcome to Throne Talk, home of Game of Thrones predictions, recaps, and more. Today's episode will feature a little bit of theory talk and some speculation as I take a look at a battle of ice and fire. In this video, I'm going to break down what would happen if the forces of ice and the forces of fire faced off in an epic battle. I'll be splitting the video into sections so it doesn't get too disjointed starting with recapping who or what on the show is currently aligned with each side. Then I'll get into the details of the battle, like where I think it might take place and who would win. And then I'll end the video by getting into some speculations of how I think the two sides will continue to grow and develop over the course of Season 5 and beyond. Let's get started with the Allies of Fire. Number 1. Dragons. Dragons are essentially the embodiment of fire on the show. They're born in it and are immune to its effects. Daenerys, her three dragons, and her army of Unsullied will be key assets in this battle. So far on the show, we've seen that Daenerys is able to command the dragons to breathe fire seemingly at will, but we haven't seen much else of what control she has over them. However, I do think that by the end of Season 5, we will see Danny ride a dragon. Number 2. Red Priests In my opinion, the worshippers of the Red God Rola have been portrayed as the most powerful magic users on the show. We've seen Melisandre somehow survive poisoning, as well as birth a seemingly unstoppable shadow assassin. We've also met Thoros of Mir, who was able to revive dead comrades. Now one of the theories that I prescribe to is that each Red Priest has a different main skill or ability, and I'm going to get a little into the books here because I think it's some cool stuff, and I don't think this show will go this route anyway, so it's not too spoilery. So in the books we meet a few more Red Priests besides Mel and Thoros. One of the priests we meet is Mokoro, who sees extremely accurate premonitions in the fire, way more accurate than Melisandre's ability. We also meet a High Priest, Benero. He is able to manipulate flames to his will. Later on, we also discover that while at the Wall, Melisandre is able to use flames to kill an eagle. What I make of all this is that each Red Priest has one ability that they specialize in, and they are also capable of other abilities with slightly less accuracy. But basically, the Red Priests are a force to be reckoned with in this battle. Lastly, on the side of fire is the Manus himself, Stannis Baratheon, and his followers. Earlier in the show, Stannis sees a premonition of his own in the flames, which he later describes to Davos as himself leading a great battle in the snow. We don't yet know who he's fighting against in the battle, but one possibility is that he's battling the forces of ice. Even though Stannis was defeated at the Blackwater, he is actually a brilliant wartime strategist being the main catalyst behind the Baratheon Triumph and the Greyjoy Rebellion. Mainly what Stannis is bringing to this battle is his okay sized army. Now let's take a look at the Forces of Ice. Number 1. White Walkers If dragons are the embodiment of fire, then walkers are the embodiment of ice. Not only do they wield swords of ice, appear themselves to be made of ice, but they also live in a place called the Lands of Always Winter. We don't know for sure why the walkers have suddenly decided to move south after thousands of years of inactivity, but we do know from how they're portrayed on the show that they are strong and that they are magic users themselves. The walkers use a necromancy form of magic, whereby they can reanimate dead humans, but I wouldn't doubt it if they were capable of other magical feats that we haven't seen yet on the show. Based on Sam's encounter with the walker in Season 3, we know that steel is not very effective against them. They're also taller and even stronger than the average human, and from the very first scene of Game of Thrones, we know that they're much quicker than the average human. That being said, the White Walkers do have some major weaknesses. One definite weakness is Dragonglass, or Obsidian as it turns a walker to complete ash in seconds with just one touch. However, Dragonglass is something that is essentially non-existent throughout Westeros. 
Also, one popular theory is that Valyrian steel is also a weakness of the walkers, but we haven't seen this play out yet on screen, and Valyrian steel is also not too common in Westeros. Lastly, though not entirely confirmed, fire seems to be a logical weakness of the walkers, and some people also believe that daylight is a weakness, hence why they live so far north. Number 2. The Whites The Whites are formerly deceased humans that the walkers use necromancy on to reanimate as their foot soldiers. From the one major encounter with a white on the show, when John saved Lord Commander Mormont while he slept, we are able to see that the whites can take a punch. They are able to fight on after multiple stab wounds, losing entire limbs, and while they can be taken down with a major thrust, they are able to quickly revive themselves. Also, based on the season 4 finale, it appears that a white can continue to battle even when they're reduced to nothing but a skeleton. The main weakness of a white is fire, which renders them completely ineffective and eventually kills them. We also see that certain types of magic can be effective against them, such as the spell on the entrance to the cave of the Three-Eyed Raven. A white's ability to sustain massive damage as well as the sheer number of whites under the walker's control, will be a key asset for the forces of ice. Now let's get into the battle's location. As far as where this battle would take place, I think it would have to be in the far north, and probably during winter, as I'm not sure how far south the walkers can go, if they are affected by daylight. I don't think it's been explicitly stated on the show, but in the books, the wall is said to be enchanted with a magical ward that supposedly prevents the White Walkers from passing it, similar to how the Three-Eyed Raven's cave prevented the Selectans from entering. Now there's a lot of theories surrounding the wall, so for simplicity's sake I'm going to assume that the previous statement is true, and that the Walkers cannot pass the wall. Now since I think the walkers will be the aggressors in this fight, and if they can't cross the wall, I think they will go around it. They have two options here. One is to cross the giant gorge to the east, which is passable only by the Bridge of Skulls. The other option is to pass to the west over the Bay of Seals. I don't think taking an entire army across a single solitary bridge is a good idea, so they'll pass over the Bay of Seals, which should be frozen over in the winter, or due to the presence of the walkers, which are said to bring cold wherever they go. The scene of the battle would be a wintry field just south of the wall. An actual battle between ice and fire would be amazing, and if done correctly, could be one of the greatest achievements in television history. If a battle of ice and fire does happen on the show, I hope it would span over multiple episodes and be done with a large portion of the show's budget for that season. Just think about how epic this battle would be. We'd have red priests and priestesses reviving people, lighting others on fire, and creating shadow assassins. The walkers would be fighting with their ice blades and turning the dead to whites. Dragons would be roasting and devouring the whole battlefield and the Manus and his men would be fighting with fiery blades and arrows. All the while, we hear music composer Raman Diawadi's A Song of Ice and Fire playing in the background. You guys may disagree with me, but I actually see this as a pretty lopsided fight, with fire being the victor. The main reason for my choice is because of the dragons. Unless the walkers are able to find a way to take down the dragons, or if somehow the cold is able to nullify their fire breathing, I don't see the walkers, who are probably more susceptible to fire than humans, being able to outlast the side of fire. The Game of Thrones lore tells us that dragons can light entire battlefields of flame, and that their flames are so hot they can even melt the strongest fortresses in the world. Based on everything I've said so far, I think that moving forward on the show, we'll find out a lot more about the walkers, and that they have more abilities than just necromancy. Similar to how the children are able to shoot fireballs, I think it's entirely possible that the walkers may be able to manipulate ice, either to construct things, or for use as a projectile, or maybe even to heal themselves. 
Also, one of my favorite theories is that there could possibly be ice dragons or some other creature that would side on the side of ice and that would even out this fight and heighten the stakes. As a bonus, I'm just going to go through some wild cards that could have an impact on this battle. Number one is Bran and the Three-Eyed Raven. So we don't know yet what side the Three-Eyed Raven fights for, but we do know that he's definitely one of the most powerful figures in Westeros, and given his obsession with Bran and his warging abilities, it makes sense that these two could play a major part in this battle. Number two is Giants and Mammoths. Presumably, the Men of the Night's Watch will burn all of the dead giants from the Battle of Castle Black, but should the White Walkers come across some mammoths or remaining giants, using their necromancy to turn them to whites would only help their cause. Thanks for watching this episode of Throne Talk. Let me know in the comments how you guys think a battle of ice and fire would unfold on the show, and as always, leave suggestions for what you'd like to see for future videos, and hit subscribe for more Throne Talk.